Hello, hello, everybody. Um, we are we are in August, and this is the August version of um, Coffee with JJHK, Coffee with Gay Games Hong Kong. My name is Betty. I think some of you know me. Um, if you're turning, if you turning to the recording, I'm the host um, of this little show, this little monthly show. And I would like to thank you for turning in live and to also for watching the recording. So at the time of this recording or today, we are exactly 441 days to the opening ceremony of the Gay Games Hong Kong. I'm going to be introducing a little bit what the Gay Games Hong Kong are. Uh, for people that already know, just listen to me for the new viewers, just, just you might learn uh, one, of, one or two things. So Hong Kong, um, Hong Kong will host the first ever gay games in Asia from the 11th to the 19th November 2022 under the theme, the theme Unity in Diversity. There will be 36 sporting events including new events and never been in any gay games um, like um, dragon boat racing, um, trail running, my sport, and also two sports that might actually be very, very special for the tonight's topic, Dutch balls and eat esports. Of course, the gay games also have opening and closing ceremonies, a festival village, and lots of arts and culture events. This is a great celebration of sports, love diversity to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the gay games 40 years anniversary a little reminder that the gay games is for everyone regarding regardless of ethnicity religion age sexual orientation gender identity ability or background yes i say age and today this is what we are particularly interesting about interested about so we actually today talking about how at Gay Games Hong Kong, we are welcoming, we're going to welcome the young. So just to make sure we clarify what the young means in that conversation tonight. So for us, the young is people between the age of 18 to 25. Why 18? Uh, mostly for insurance re reason. Um, you know, people have to be... Um, to be, at, to be of legal age to participate um, at the gay games. Um, but before we go into today's topic, I just wanted to, to let you know that already we now have a pre-register, we have a pre-registration that's been open for quite a, quite a few months now. Um, and at this stage, we have 1,510 people that have re registered from over 50 countries and regions. So this is actually a massive global event. Um, actually 51 countries and regions. I just want to be quite specific. Um, so for those of you who haven't pre-registered and you viewing the recording of you in today live, go to our website at www.ggh2022.com and pre-register. Going to give us a, a lot of things for us to to make sure we have a, a great following and to make sure you keep um, you know you get posted with with what what we actually all about. So today's conversation is great. It's about the youth, about the young. Um, I think I don't belong to uh, to that uh, that sector, but I think I can talk to some uh, to some great great people today. And we have a great panel of guests from around the world. I'm really, really impressed. So um, I just want everybody to say hello quickly. Um, we have Isaac. So Isaac, you are calling from New York. Can you tell us about it? Can you tell us about you a little bit? Yeah, hi, um, I'm Isaac. I, um, I'm a runner and a little bit of a swimmer, probably will do a little bit of both um, at Gay Games. Um, and I am a, I'm a theater artist. I work uh, in theater here in New York. Um, so I'm waiting patiently for it to return. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, just to let our viewers know why do I, I haven't invited quite a few different people, you'll see uh, very different people, but um, people have uh, have invited tonight. Some of them have actually are like some of the top twenty 
of young people that have pre-registered and Isaac was one of them. Thank you so much. Um, next we have um, Alice. Alice Wu, you want to say hello, introduce yourself? Yes, hi, uh, I'm Alice. I'm currently studying uh, in Hong Kong U. Uh, almost graduated. Hong Kong U for, for everybody. <laughs> Hong Kong U is a, one of our big university here in Hong Kong. Yeah, so yeah, nice to meet you all. And you have pre-registered oh, yeah. on the what? Yeah, I've pre-registered for the 10K running. Another thing. runner. We, yeah. That's it. That's, they are the best. The rest, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, next, we have uh, Jody. Jody, you want to, to say a quick hello? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Jody, and I'm from Hong Kong, though I've spent quite a bit of time in the U.S. And Isaac, my background is actually in musical theater, so I'm sure offline there's plenty for us to talk about. I'm a big musical theater fan, so um, I'm involved in the gay games, mostly from the music side, and I'm sure we'll go into that in a bit. Yes, yes, because uh, Judy is, um, ah, I think she's a quite an up-and-coming uh, musical artist in Hong Kong. So, uh, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, later. Uh, we also have on the call, we have uh, Buddy. Uh, Buddy, you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Buddy, um, you can call me Buddy. Um, so like I'm based in Melbourne, Australia and I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, like I, uh, my pronouns are he and him and I identify as a cisgender gay man within the rainbow family. And uh, for this webinar, like, you know, um, I don't consider myself uh, within the young age bracket anymore, unfortunately, I'm 33. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and my, at my previous, uh, at the, my first gay games was actually three years ago when I was 30. Um, so I can, you know, and my sport is running and um, within the GGHK, I volunteer in the international outreach program. And also, like I say, I work closely with others, including Betty. Exactly, exactly. That's why we have a, 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 an invited buddy because he's actually talking to a lot of the uh, of a youth bracket. Um, we we might have another guest later, but um, I will introduce him when when he comes in. So let's just have a let's start with our with our little chat. So you gave us a little bit of background on who you were, but I just wanted to ask you. Um, Let's just start with Isaac, because I think maybe he has the most interesting story. Um, what is your uh, connection with gay games? Um, yeah, I went to my first gay games um, in Paris. And um, yeah, it was such 20, a- 2018, huh? right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, was, it was such a fun experience, um, but especially because um, the- the front runner family in New York and around the world is just, it's so like, we were so connected and, um, and I think we had like a hundred people from front runners New York that went. And um, so to get to spend that time, it was also over my 21st birthday, which it is a little bit insignificant in Paris, but um, um, as a as an American, it was a, a very fun <laughs> fun time. Yeah, being in Paris, okay, I think yeah, for for our viewers that don't know, in America or in Australia, being twenty one is like at least like really being an adult, you can actually drink. I don't know if that's yeah. the main thing, but it's like a big, big, big milestone date. But I'm guessing being in Paris at the gay games for your 21st that must have been quite special so yeah. yeah and that was your first gay games and how did you hear about gay games then um was it, sort of was front a, runners? yeah there was like a big campaign we have a whole like committee to try to get people to go um and it was right around the time that i joined so um they were really rearing to get us to go so i just went to like an information meeting and was like, yep, yeah, that sounds really fun. I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. And that was three years ago. So I was in Paris as well in 2018. I was not 21. I was uh, not saying. Uh, <laughs> but that means when uh, when you heard that, I mean, actually, uh, Gay Games uh, Hong Kong was in Paris. We were a team there. But and you just thought, okay, I'm going to sign out right away. Is that is that your feeling at the time? Or you just had to go home and just kind of think about it again? No, oh, yeah, I, uh, I, I pretty much just like immediately, <laughs> immediately registered. 
Okay, great, great, great. Um, so I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Alice, um, what is her connection with gay games? And yeah. Actually, I'm really new to this because I've actually never heard of gay games before this year. I didn't even know there was an event called Gay Games. Uh, like originally, I, 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 I saw uh, one of my previous residential college tutors uh, Instagram post, and then she was uh, hashtagging like uh, Gay Games Hong Kong 2022. And I'm, I'm like, oh, it's going to be in Hong Kong. So I looked it up and I thought it was interesting. And I'm probably going to volunteer because I thought it's like a professional sportsman's game. Uh, and later on, uh, I was browsing through the like official account, like the prescriptions I have uh, on WeChat. And then I saw, oh, it's like for everyone. So I looked it up on the website and then thought, okay, maybe I can do the 10K one because I've been jogging and I like do enjoy doing a lot of sports, though I'm not like professional, <laughs> but I thought, you know, it could be fun. So, yeah. So that's why I pre-registered. This is this is a perfect story, right? I mean, for us that that know about gay games, this yeah, is yeah to this help is with the promotion said, and stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is this is what gay games is about. This is about the fact that anybody can join, right? Everybody that knows the gay game, it's about. I mean, you know, it's about the fact that um, anybody that 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 is able to do one of the sport can actually say, "Hey, I can actually participate at a massive, massive." Um, um, global sporting events, global and sp cultural events. Um, so this is this is good. You knew, but yes, we, this is this. We want people that that don't. Know, I mean, we want people that know the game, but we also want people that that say, "Hey, the game is coming next to me. Uh, this is something I want to participate in." Um, I'm gonna ask. Um, I'm gonna ask Julie because I think Julie and I have a funny connection with gay games. Well, so the funny you, connection is that. I clearly don't remember meeting you for the first time and you don't remember <laughs> meeting me. <laughs> I think it was mutual. Well, we somewhat remember what happened. I think this is about three to four years ago when in the process of bidding for the gay games in Hong Kong, I actually went to a, a mini fundraising dinner to support it. And so Betty and I, theoretically- I organized it. She organized it. I organized and I believe we may dinner. Have and it was in a small little restaurant, a very, very cool little queer small restaurant in Hong Kong. and. It was not a huge amount of money, but I remember it was some money that was help was going to help us to go to Paris. Like in, you know, it's at amazing the time, to see how full money. circle this comes. Yeah. And interestingly, that restaurant is owned by my partner, uh, who is the reason that I got re-engaged with the Gay Games this time around because she's involved as an ambassador, and so I naturally got looped in. <laughs> and I think it's been it's been really fun to be more involved and just more aware of the things that are happening across the many, many layers of gay games. So in between the, the little fundraising I did at the restaurant, I've, I'm sure I was talking for two hours, that's what I do. Um, in between then and now, I mean, what was your connection? I mean, is this something that was in the back of your mind and then just you can you keep saying things or what's your feeling between now and, and I mean, then and now? I think the biggest difference is that I've just increasingly become I think more active in the community here. Um, I am just kind of, I always say this actually, because I feel like I'm many things and not just one thing. And so one part of my identity is obviously that I identify as queer um, and I am partnered with a woman and I'm, I'm many other factors, right? And so I think naturally the gay games really appeal to me because it really is appealing to different aspects of the community. It really is a bunch of people who wants to be involved in education involving others um, celebrating diversity and so when I got the opportunity to kind of learn more about gay games and found out that it is coming to Hong Kong you know all things hopefully smoothly then I thought it'd be really great for me to get involved from a musical aspect um, of it because one of the latest songs that I released was actually about my coming out story so it very naturally kind of fit all together and I I didn't realize music could be a part of gay games but hey <laughs> here I am <laughs> That's right. That's right. We'll talk a little bit a bit, a bit later about you, your musical career. Um, so, buddy, what, we have known each other for a while. I don't really know what is your link with gay games. Can you please tell us a little bit more? 
Yeah, just like Isaac, like, you know, um, Paris 2018 was my first gay games. Um, at the time uh, when I heard about gay games, I was living in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and I run with a front runners chapter there. Um, it called DGLA, Dutch Gay and Lesbian Athletics, which just recently renamed themselves Rainbow Athletics Amsterdam, uh, which is part of the um, like, you know, like a LGBTQ sports community. Um, so yeah, like, you know, I heard about games in Paris and it was just like a, like a stone throw away. Um, and then I also learned that like, you know, the, the running group in Amsterdam was started because of gay games um, in 19, Amsterdam 1998. So like, you know, um, I kept on, this is something that I kept on finding out um, as I do my outreach internationally, I found out that a lot of LGBTQ sports groups are like you know like started because of a gay games that happened within their region so bef as a uh, as a young person back then well um i accepted myself as a gay man around the age of 20 and then one of the first ways for me to connect with the community was with the running groups um that is in melbourne australia and i didn't know back then um even though like, and I was, I have never heard of gay games or like say, I've never been to a gay games before. I was already a beneficiary or like a benefit, uh, benefactor of the impact that gay games had around the world. So like, you know, I heard that like gay games has been held in uh, North America, Europe and in Sydney, Australia, it, it was held 20 years ago. And I, when I heard that, you know, gay games is coming to Asia for the very first time, I was so happy that this is going to have an impact, not just for Hong Kong, but in the region of Asia, just like it did with like say, North America, Europe and Australia. And it will benefit a lot of people who might even not even heard of gay games like now until much later on. Mm. Mm, fantastic. I think that we all have, I mean, my, my story with gay games is a little bit like this too, but actually I just, I, you know, I was in Sydney in uh, 2002 and the gay games were there and it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, well, gay games, okay. And then um, I met people later and I said, like, do you think this is something we could organize in our, our country? And this is, this is what happened. But this is my story and um you know, we're here to talk about young people. Um, I just want to go back to uh, to uh, to Isaac. So Isaac, you were one of the first person to register for Gay Games. Um, and you kind of answered a little bit the question earlier, but you are in New York, um, get, you went to Gay Games Paris, but then have you ever been to, gay, to, to Hong Kong before? Have you been to Asia before? No, um, I, I have an aunt who um, is from mainland China and she said throughout my life that she would take me back there and then it never happened. Um, no, and I, re I really want to. So this, this is very exciting to see um, to when, when I saw that it was going to be Hong Kong, I was like, oh, amazing. I get to go like over the to that part The fact that you just, you just sign. I mean, this is, yeah. this is something that that's, I mean, I, I have to be honest, when, when I was 20, well, 23, um, I would have been a little bit anxious to sign up for something that would have been like across the world. Um, and this is when you guys are like, this is quite amazing. I mean, even though in your city, um, so this is what I'm, I'm going to talk to, uh, to Ali about because Alice is a, maybe the newest, uh, the newest person. So you said one of your tutor just mentioned the gay games. You saw it, you registered. That's kind of a bit of a jump. So can you tell, tell us what, what made you do it really? Just really, I mean, you know, looking at information is one thing, but saying, I want to do this. Um, maybe you want to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, actually, originally I had a bit of trouble uh, with my sexual orientation, I feel like it's not, I'm not comfortably, like, openly out. And then I met Brenda, uh, who actually really helped me on this issue, because we had, like, a group called Global Diversity in my residential college. And then for that group, we uh, did a lot of events uh, regarding feminism or uh, LGBTQ issues or cultural, uh, ethnical diversity so, and that's when I became like engaged in a group that's really friendly and really confident and comfortable being who they are. So uh, I came out to Brenda. And then after that, I just became more and more open about who I am. And then, so when I see uh, that she is participating in quite a lot of the gay events, the trans events, I feel like um, it's, it's like, uh, a sort of like a responsibility 
just to increase the visibility of you know lgbtq and even lesbians so yeah i thought like you know that's something since i enjoy jogging anyways why not do it in the gay games so yeah that's well, why um alice i don't know if people can see but i have tears in my eyes because this is as a uh, I have to say I'm an older, I'm an older, uh, you know, I'm an older queer woman. I'm past my fifties, and um, I've always said, and I've always kind of done quite a lot of things in, you know, on on the, you know, on the volunteer things. But I always said, gay games is for us, but it's also for for the future. It's for the young people because look at Isaac and look at everybody how enthusiastic they are. They went to the first gay games three years ago, and now they're like. My God, this is a life-changing event, and not life-changing just for themselves, but for this community. And um, this is Alice. You will find the most amazing community in gay games. Not only um, a local support, but also people from around the world. Um, and participating in sport is such a, yeah. you know, a, yeah, I know, like life-changing experience. Who, exactly, exactly. People who do sports are usually quite friendly and open to like a lot of stuff that's what i can mm, feel yeah yeah i think this is this is fantastic thank you very very much for sharing i mean it's very touching um jody also yeah. <laughs> i mean you said you know you met me three years ago and when you heard about it and then you have a partner and then she became ambassador and then so it's a little bit slower a little bit slower but i'm not saying it's a bad thing i just want to say what made you really say, we talked about it a little bit before, but what made you really say, this is something I really need to be part of. And as, a, as an artist, and then you just said earlier that you have come up with some songs around, around gay games or something. Can you tell us your journey in a bit more detail? Absolutely. So Alice said something earlier that really resonated with me. And I think it was the word responsibility. Um, I think for a very big part of my growing up and, you know, to be surrounded in the theater community, it's a very open community and one that celebrates diversity. But for myself, it was something that I struggled with a lot growing up. So I'm coming from a relatively conservative Christian background. I still consider myself Christian. And so there's definitely elements of that that impacted my, my growing up. And within that, you can add on the elements of being raised in Hong Kong. And so there are different societal pressures and different societal things in play that led me to feel like someone else could be part of this community, but not me. And so when I slowly came to that realization, and, you know, obviously I can go on separately to talk about my own journey and that coming out story, I felt that it's increasingly my responsibility to just be able to share how I was able to find myself and become comfortable in my own skin without trying to, you know, convey all the facts because the facts are out there about the LGBT community, the facts about the hurt that people have gone through are out there in the community. But I think what really is able to kind of make it applicable to the people around us, and I said this in my interview in Cantonese, is that this is not just an LGBT plus community event. It's a everyone event because we are ultimately, you know, your siblings, we are ultimately your colleagues, we are your family members, your friends. And so it's related to everyone. And I think for me, the moment that I felt like more and more of the people around me were just kind of naturally and gently nudging me in this direction to participate in the gay games, I felt like the least I could do um, is to be able to apply some of, you know, the gifts that I feel like I've been given and the joyful experiences that I've had and then kind of just be able to share that. And in, in a context of this, whether it's a Zoom call or through music or whatever it is, I'm just learning and I'm still learning to be more open and more transparent. And, you know, I have no pressure to convince anyone of anything. It's just that they can come to that realization themselves and I wanna give them a space to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for, for this. Um, and as you said, you saw you, there was a, can you tell us a little bit about the musical journey and the song that you have been writing? Sure. So I've actually been involved in music pretty much my whole life. So I used to, like I say, be involved in musical theater. My dad will say I wrote songs since I was two about going to the bathroom or something to that effect. But it was only because of COVID that I really got the time to kind of release my own music. So I think at the end of 2019 or something like that, I, I released my first song on Spotify. 
And so I think I'm about to release song number four. I think it's just something that once you start, it's very hard to stop. And so, yeah, I think- So how can latest... now viewers find you? <laughs> I'm you can... plugging you, I'm plugging you. You are plugging me in. I'm still working on self-promotion. That's my okay. least favorite okay. aspect. But uh, you can find me on Spotify under Jody Chan. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, and I'm sure we can share that across there too. But I, I want to continue writing songs that kind of represent not just my story but the people around me I feel like at the end of the day the songs that I write are I like being a storyteller so I mm. love words and I love music and hopefully the songs that I write can resonate with more people than just my immediate vicinity so um thank you so much Jody. and I plug you because um you know you've been talking about music and maybe we have some young listeners or viewers and maybe sometimes music is a, is a language that's you know good, good for that um Isaac I have so a much. question for you so you were 21 when you were in Paris um the so Paris gay games were in 2018 uh, now we're almost to uh, to the gay games Hong Kong um in your mind with the promotion I know COVID was in the middle of it but hey um, do you think there's been a difference between the way Gay Games has uh, reached out to the younger generation? Um, honestly, like I, I feel like I have a very different like sense of, of sort of promotion before because most of like, I mostly found out about it originally like uh, with Paris from front runners and going to our runs and they were talking about it all the time um and I just like I haven't been going to runs um mostly because of COVID a little bit because of work so I've been running on my own a lot and um mostly seeing the promotion like through Instagram or like posts and stuff so um I don't know it, it's interesting because it's a, it feels like it's such a different um just like time like a lot of my communication with people is over the internet instead of in person so um i i don't know if it's um if it's me I, I, it's probably you know for everyone that that it's um just okay. like it's a completely not a, different it's not time. A bad thing online. Yeah. I think look at the fact that we are from around the world. I mean, you know, COVID has actually somehow brought you quite closer together as well. But um, okay. Um, so um buddy, a little bit of question for you now. So you're part of the um, international outreach team. And um, of course, one of the things that we want to do at Gay Games is we want to increase, we want to break the records. Actually, we want to break all the records. Yes, we do. But we want to wait one of the records of having, <laughs> we do, having um, more young people participating, again, people from 18 to 20, 25. Um, so you've been in the outreach team for a little while now, and I am too, but can you just give us a couple of things that what we actually do internationally um, to reach to, well, that, that, that sector of population? Yep. Yeah, we do have like say like a strategy to like say to, uh, to get more like say uh, young people um all like um to, to attend gay games like um we court and then like we uh, manage to secure like say um sponsorship from a private donor to help um waive um the participation and registration fee for like say people who will be uh, between eighteen to twenty five as at uh, the 10th of November 2022 from um, Greater China, um, which is like say um, mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and also um, South ASEAN countries, and also um, South Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and, and Nepal. Um, so it's it's a it's let's a great talk win. About, let's talk about the money a little bit later. Oh, I'm so I sorry. want actually to no no don't be sorry. This is actually <laughs> this is a really good thing. I just want to to know a little bit about what are the activities we're doing. I mean maybe we can talk a little bit about the champions and a little bit. For example, I know that in Hong Kong we have been reaching out to um, the universities, and I think Alice is the perfect example. Um, so we've been reaching out to the major and in, in universities where we can have talks, um, you know, we can have lecture, talk about the gay games and so forth. Do you have other, other examples as well of like kind of activities we, we might want to do? Um, so um, 
like we do a lot like um I in in the international outreach division like that yeah, which is separate from lo local outreach uh in Hong Kong yeah. um we try to reach uh wide like you know and then like we we try to recruit like say uh, young people and women and and trans community as well um but in in terms of activities um the the one thing that we tried to reach was with an organization in the UK, uh, Mermaids UK. Um, have you heard of it, Isaac? Um, so yeah, like Verity Smith, like you know, like, um, we tried to like say um, a lot of them were still in like say um, what do you call it? like say um, brainstorming and planning. I, I think COVID can mm. like say put a lot of restrictions on what we can do at the moment. Um, but yeah, like you know, like I am. I'm definitely in in need of more young people to come forward and like say, hey, yep, I'm interested to like say, get in touch with gay games and like say, um, you know, volunteer for gay games in my home city and country. So um, if you are interested in watching this, please do apply for um, a champion and get in touch with yeah. me. And, you know, it's going to be two way learning because I'm constantly learning from this um, people, um, you know, like, um, young people, like, you know, they, they, like, all of you, like, you know, um, know a lot of things that I need to learn as well. Okay. And so I think maybe I can give, bit, we can give a bit more details what champions are because people might get a bit confused of what champions are. Do you You're want right. to explain to our viewers what our gay games champions are? So like, like a champion doesn't mean like you know you are like you know you're given like say like um like you know, oh you win a gold medal in like say running we um I think the term champion is like say um someone who is going to be our advocate like you know or, or like say um kind of like say a bit like spokesperson like say like if you if you're interested if your friends are interested to find out more about gay games you could be like the person who is knowledgeable about gay games who knows about the events that are there like you know um how to apply um the, uh, you would know about like say uh, the funding support that is available as well and then you can you know help them to like you know do their application and in general like say attend um if there are local events like you know um that you could think you think that people can raise the awareness about gay games in your area like you know you could help us wear this shirt like you know wave our flags um in the at the event so that people would um be aware about um gay games hong kong yeah i think exactly i think you explained quite well i love your enthusiasm buddy basically our champions is people that can talk about gay games to the close community i mean again alice is a perfect example because um, maybe people can hear about gay games in the media, maybe people hear about gay games on social media, but when you have someone actually talking about gay games, could be face to face, could be on a Zoom call, let's be honest, some, a lot of things have been on Zoom call, even at university or especially at universities, but then actually comes closer to your heart. Um, I have a quick question to Isaac. So Isaac, you were in Paris in 2018. Um, I was there too, I thought it was amazing. Um, and what do you think uh, would be the measures that Gay Games Hong Kong should have especially put in place to welcome young people? I mean, we're not talking about before, we talk about the promotion, but when people are at the Gay Games, what do you think, I mean, give us some of the positive and maybe some of more negative experience in Paris as a younger person, I mean, being 21 in a foreign city, um, I don't know, maybe you can just share a couple of experience and we can grow from there. Yeah, and I'm I, gonna ask think, Buddy the same thing too. <laughs> I, th I think, I um, think, I don't know, because I um, sort of, the way that running works, I feel like um, a lot of people join uh, like clubs or start running when they're a little bit older. Um, so, I'm, you know, I, I think I'm still like, the youngest person in front runners um but um Alice is young <laughs> well, <laughs> well in, in New York. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, just kidding just kidding but yeah so I I've just been used to like I I joined front runners when I was 19 I was by far the youngest um so I um I've just been like so used to sort of hanging out with um with older people. And so like, I, I spent most of my time with other people from my club and we, we okay, would go so that's out. And very, was... So we took cut you off. That's very interesting. So within the club, you felt like you were mentored 
that's very interesting to me. So yeah. It's, like you, it's, it's your club was like your, your little mentoring program in a way. Yeah. And okay. they, they did a lot of, of events like for us and, you know, we went out on like a boat cruise and, and stuff like this. And, um, and it was fun. Um, but I, th I think I would have enjoyed like some sort of like younger person, like meet up, like go to, go to a restaurant or go to a club or something like that. And like for specifically for younger people. So I could meet more people that are outside of my club. Um, cause I, I did feel like, and, and maybe this is true for people who sort of go alone or aren't attached to a, a club or a team that, um, it would be nice to have, you know, some night that we could all sort of, that's like more for well, us to dancing. sort of, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to talk to new people. Um, yeah. And how did you feel about, um, like the registration process, I mean, you know, in Paris, like, I mean, the, the accommodation and all this and that as a young person, maybe, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing when you're 21, you might have might not as traveled as much as if you were in your 50s. Um, is there anything we need to kind of like think about or, you know, anything? I mean, for so for me, I I pretty much only travel to run, and that's that's sort of like my excuse to go and and visit a place. Is if I like see a marathon, and I'm like, yes, I want to go visit there, and I <laughs> I'll run. <laughs> um, so I know that that is not true for a lot of other people, um, but yeah, it is. I think. One thing was that there was a lot, or not a lot, but there was a couple of people that I knew that went and like didn't even compete or anything. They just went because they knew about the events and and sort of what the like cultural part of it would be and being able to go and watch sports and stuff. So I think that that could be part of it too, just say like, even if you don't want to compete or you're, you know, you don't know anything, you, you can still like go and meet other people and, you know, watch and be a part of the cultural side. And it's still a really fun experience just as a vacation. Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is the largest uh, sp uh, uh, sports and cultural event in the world, bigger than the Olympics, bigger than the Olympics. So uh, buddy, I'm going to ask you the same question and I don't want you to wear you um gay games volunteer hat i want you to wear your participant um hat i mean i know you were in your 30s when you were in paris but hey so young and um i just want to say if you actually met other young people and what what do you think we should do to welcome young people in hong kong you're right like you know oh gosh it brings back memories right like and i was 30 years old um when i came there even though like say i um also like I, I knew like a lot of my friends from my previous running group, London Frontrunners, before I moved to Amsterdam, and then a couple of people from Amsterdam, uh, the Gale, uh, also joined. Um, I met a lot of young, a, a lot of people. It, we just took over the streets of Paris. Like, you know, everybody were wearing this lanyard. So this is the lanyard, my lanyard for Gay Games uh, Paris. And you would just feel like, like, he is, well, like, they are all like, it's it it makes it easier to strike a conversation like you know when you are in a in a bar or like say even on the streets and then like say you're <laughs> um and oh gosh like you know this is when I met Lafayette and Henrik oh, bless him like you know who recently passed away on the street of Paris and then he actually introduced me to a couple of other FGG um board members at the time and I didn't realize how significant that was. Like, you know, I just thought like, you know, this is just such a really friendly person um, who just happened to be like, say, happened to like, you know, was also a participant, but yeah. Now I think it would be amazing if we have like more people like him, like, you know, like who would be like, you know, be willing to make the first move and say, hello. Um, and I, I, I resonate Isaac's experience. I think it'd be great if you could like have like say, um, 
like a, like a, an invitation, maybe just for like say the, the age group of young people, so that young people within like the age, uh, the age bracket of 18 and 25 at the beginning of like say the, the week could have like say a get together networking ses uh, session, you know, because they are our future and then they, they need to get to know each other as well. Thank you very much. I mean, I can, I can we can all see your passion about gay games, but um, and Judy and Alice, you don't, uh, it's very difficult to actually explain what the gay games are, the actual games are. You can see, this is what also what happened to me. I came to Paris for the first time, gay games Paris the first time. It's really nice to see the website, talk to people, but the community, the vibrancy of the community around such a diverse, positive event around sports with people from around the world. As I said earlier in my introduction, at the moment, we have um, over 1,500 people uh, pre-registered for 51 countries and region. 51. I mean, amazing. I mean, as a as a young, I mean, as a, any age person, but as a young person, how amazing will it be for you to just know people from this from our community, the LGBTQA community, as well as allies from over 51 countries and region, maybe even more by the time. And that's 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 what I really want to try to con kind of convey. And um, Alice and, and, and Judy, you've made the right decision in signing up, but now we need to kind of make sure that we have more people signing up. So I just want to talk about, not about the negativity, but what do you think are the challenges? So uh, maybe I'm going to talk, uh, start talking about Isaac. What do you think are the challenges for people to, from that age group to say, nah, that is just not for me. What do you think that would be? I definitely think that like money is a is a big thing. Um, and it can be hard, like um, sort of planning, a, especially such a long, um, a, a, like a long it's period of time to, yeah, mm -hmm. that um, to, to plan everything and to be able to pay for it. And um, yeah, I, I was lucky to be a part of Front Runners because they they like helped with a lot of stuff. They had like, a group, we have a whole group of people that like finds hotels and flights and uh, tries to get people to like stay together and um, you know, figure out what the cheapest way, and and also they have a um, like a scholarship program to help with with the costs. So um, yeah, that I mean, since I pretty much had like all of that stuff made, um, it was a lot easier for me to say like, yes, I want to go. Great, thank you, Isaac. Um, I think it's also quite a bit of a challenge, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, um, but. I just want to kind of talk about the, the challenges first. So Alice, brand new to gay games. This is new for you. You meet those people, crazy people, crazy about gay games. Um, now you signed up, but um, what do you think are the challenges for you and also for other people to sign up? Because I'm sure you have, have spoken to, to your peers um, or maybe not. Um, I don't know, what do, what do you think are the challenges for young people to actually sign up? They are pre-registered now. Yeah, um, I think Isaac has made a good point because if it weren't in Hong Kong the, uh, next year, I doubt that I would sign up as well because I feel like if I'm signing up this game alone, not as a team or not in a club, it will be very difficult for me to, to actually make up my mind to just fly to another country and then participate in this gay games if I, weren't, if I don't know anyone there or I don't know like any kind of club I'm going with. This could be one of the challenges. And another thing is... Uh, I'm speaking from my experience because I've never been to gay games. Um, unlike Buddy and Isaac has also been uh, to the previous games. I'm not sure what, I wasn't sure what kind of event this was, like if, it's were, if it were for professional athletes or is it for everybody? So that's why uh, in the very beginning, I didn't sign up because I wasn't sure uh, I'm at the level to participate because I play badminton, but I'm not like, I'm no professional at all. I run, but I like I'm not like I've not participated in any kind of like official marathons. So yeah, so at that time this was one of my major concern. Okay. But yeah, I that's what I can think of right now. But 
uh, given the current circumstances, uh, COVID could be another concern as well. <laughs> Hopefully well, it won't we'll, be next year. We'll Fingers see, crossed. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Judy, uh, Judy Battle. <clears throat> sorry, what about you? Um, can you see. just... I'm sorry? Good to see. Okay, we're speaking French. French. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think are the challenges for you and maybe for your peers as well? I mean, when I say your peers, 18 to, um, to 25, not to sign up for gay games. And we're talking about people in Hong Kong and people outside of Hong Kong as well. Well, actually, I'm kind of taking a step back. I'm actually very curious, and I just had this thought. I'm, I'm very curious what the you know very active and high participation rate events in Hong Kong are doing. So I'm just thinking like Spartan, Spartan events, or like the the Moon Trekker, and and I think it's interesting because the range of participants in terms of age is really very vast. So I'm very curious what kind of best practices we might be able to try to adopt in getting people to join. And I think one of them is, like you say, is trying to gather people to apply in groups. It's very true. Even I myself am guilty of not pulling in my friends yet to participate in the gay games because I haven't figured out how to sell it to them. But I actually think it's more or less. You're here. You're here. <clears throat> it's, 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 it's a community event. You're right. And um, I think one of the things that would have maybe the name gay games has put off some people initially and without having a very clear communication a methodology and being like this is actually a community sports event you don't have to be a professional it could be a lot of fun um, I have so and so friends you know just to peer pressure them a little bit to join as well I think that actually might be something to to everyone wants to join a party right I, I feel like everyone wants to be involved in a party so if we can make it sound like one uh, we can probably loop in a lot more people. well it, it, it's a party around sports and culture exactly. and, and exactly. community um i think maybe i don't know this is my my feeling i think our our community maybe is now kind of getting away from just all the parties and i think gay games uh, hopefully by next year you know um covid restriction will be these eased off and it's going to be a way for our community to reconnect um in hong kong in Asia and globally. I really feel exactly. like this is gonna be something. Gay game is just a name. It's just, you know, unity in diversity is, is our motto. Um, so buddy, um, same question. And then maybe we can go, we can go to the, the actual um, solution of the question, but same question. And again, we I'm talking to you about a person that went to gay game first time when you were quite young. Um, what do you think the challenges are for people from that age bracket to come to gay games? All right, like, you know, like, um, like I was 30 at the time and I was living in Europe at the time. So I think like, you know, um, for me, like, you know, um, if I were, let's say, living in Australia, like, you know, it would have been like, say, the distance and the cost, like you say, you know, um, <clears throat> but I can look back at the time when I only held Indonesian passport. Um, visa was such a difficult thing to like say to obtain like you know and this is very true for the previous gay games where it has hit it had been held in united states canada um europe Schengen europe or australia if you only held indonesian passports or philippines passport or indian passport it's very difficult to attend like this event without jumping through hoops and then like say if you were to explain yourself that you want to attend like gay games like you, know, you kind of put no, like daunting explanation to your visa application right but like hong kong is a really open society like um people with indonesian passport and philippines passport can get like say visa free period for two weeks and this removes like a large obstacle for people within the region and this point. is something that actually i kept on telling people why this is really important that it's held in hong kong in asia in the heart of asia for for the very first time because it opens up so much doors like you know um, so yeah, I like, you know that's something. And if you want to talk about the, like, and then of course, like there is that cost barrier um, as well. Okay, let's talk about it right now. So you're very excited about this, and this is something that, because yes, I think I personally think one of the challenge that we have, yeah. or maybe a young person has, um, is okay. Yeah, I would love to participate in this amazing event. Uh, but I'm a student or I just starting my work career. I don't have, to, you know, I don't have the money to actually do, do something like this. So we have what we call um, funding support. So, uh, Buddy, do you want to, I mean, we have a couple of slides yep. there. Do you want to actually just kind of explain to our viewers what it is 
Absolutely. And if they're so, interested, how they can participate. Yeah, so I work closely with Jack Yan, like, you know, who was, um, you know, uh, because of conflicting schedule, he can't be here with us, but like, in like, um, so um, the FGG, like say in the previous, like, um, uh, gay games. So the I think, FGG, but, just sorry to cut you off, FGG. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, the Federation of Gay Federation Games. Federation of Gay Games. So in the past, our... like, you know, mm -hmm. um, have had, like, say this, um, um, program called the scholarship program where they would like say set aside like say an, a certain amount of funding to be able to bring people from like say um like financial challenges like or like say financial obstacles to be able to participate at the gay games and uh, and come back to make an impact in their communities um like you know, i think in, in at, at gay games paris they were able to bring about 50 people and i know like say two of them who went back to uh nairobi kenya and started a front runners lgbtq running group in kenya which is really inspiring do you remember like now how like say this in gay games like it's a gift that keeps on giving like you know like it has impact on young people even if they don't attend the actual event it has benefited me this is one of the ways it did um this time we have a like a like a program that is a bit more ambitious like you know um we want to bring we want to enable more than 50 people to be able to attend uh gay games we we want to bring uh as how many, many people, people? So, how many people oh uh, i think like you know like the uh one of the uh initial plan um was, was that like say um I, i'm sorry like uh, um I, I, I should a like lot to more people a, a lot, lot more people, people. that's more what than I'm 50. Say. we want to be able to be to to bring as many people you know as many people pos as possible that have yeah. actually you know financial challenges to come to gay games yes Sorry, buddy. so the amount of money that um that uh gay games and federation of gay games has committed remains the same but then like say instead of like just um give uh giving this to only 50 people we want to like say enable um like people to like uh, uh, create their profile share their story which is going to be impactful as well and like say this like you know um we'll hopefully like you now we'll be able to like say um uh, attract more funding from other people who are like touched by your personal story and a mission that you want to do and then like you know therefore like we're we're going to enable people to 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 get more funding than um the initial funding that's initially available mm -hmm, um when mm -hmm. it gets closer to the actual event like you know the, the shortfall um of like say the fundraising will be covered by the in this initial um commitment amount that Federation of Gay Games and Gay Games uh, Hong Kong organizers have committed to. So um, it's not that we uh, there's less money. It's just like you know we want to bring even more money. Um, so the way it works, it works is that like, you know uh, check so out the have, Gay Games we Hong have Kong a, we have website. Some slides on the we have some slides here. So if our uh -huh. viewers want to actually look at. Yeah, so like, uh, the first the first step would be like to check out Gay Games Hong Kong website. There is a section for funding support, including like say links to the application form. Like once you um submit your application form, it's going to be reviewed by uh, like a committee within the FGG that um, Jack Yen um, is also working closely with. And then like you know they're gonna like say um like uh, they're gonna like say review all of these applicants and like say they're gonna like um admit like say um approve and admit people um who they think like you know are uh, like you know uh, like uh, are appropriate for this uh funding support and then some of them are going to be waitlisted as well and then like you know like, um it goes to um there is um upon acceptance candidates will set up their uh campaign within the platform that we have that we provide and there will be like say a team like you know there will be a like, jack me and then like say uh, a couple of other volunteers and then like um then, and then like say the candidates will drive their fundraising and also like say our our own like say uh volunteers will also like say share their stories and hopefully we'll be able to like say raise the uh, amount required and if it still hasn't uh, achieved the target that they did we have that funding initial funding of 100,000 US dollar that would make up for a shortfall um, and then like you know yeah so hopefully we'll be able to enable a lot more people than the previous gay games have been uh, able to enable thank you so much betty thank you so much and maybe um next slide and the next slide explains that there's actually a, a waiver and that's what You're we were right. talking about earlier and i can just talk about it with, um because we have a, a we have very de generous donors that have said um, we want to be able to support the young young people to come to gay games. Um, 
um, and especially young people from the region. So greater, Ch greater China, which includes Hong Kong, Macau, Asian countries, Singapore, Malaysia, so forth, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, um, and people from Hong Kong to participate at gay games. So this is gonna be a, a, a waiver, um, registration and participant participation free waiver for for our young people yes absolutely so like the only thing that will be required is i think just like the um commitment fee which is like say the same amount with the pre-registration fee which is uh hong kong 50 50 hong kong dollar and that translates to about like say less than seven us dollar at the moment mm -hmm. so and then that's it um of course like you know we we put in this commitment fee just because we don't want like people to register with a lot of fake emails and then take up the spots that would have like you know been available to other people um so that's why so but it's for a very nominal amount uh, we'll, thank you. Uh, they will, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, buddy. We have already been talking for almost an hour. Um, um, so I just wanted to say that there are some ways for people to be to to be su uh, financially supported to come to gay games. Uh, I have a quick question. This is a Q Q and and I have a quick question. And this is true. We haven't spoken about sports. I mean, we actually have, we have been talking for one hour. Yes, we did talk about running quite a bit, but um, um, some people are asking, is there a special, sports are especially uh, targeted to young people? And I have, and I, I didn't mention at the beginning that, um, so this year we're going to have e-sports, so electronic sports, like um, sports in gate, um, electronic games, video games type sports, as well as dodgeball. And those are a known uh, sport that actually attract uh, quite, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the demography, demog demography of these um, people playing these games are actually quite younger. So um, there are 36 sports. So we hope that in the, within the 36 sport, if it's not dodgeball, if it's not eat sport, if it's not running, <laughs> there should be something that uh, that people want to actually participate in. in. So um, go to our website, www.ggHk2022.com to find out about the, the sports and find out how you can pre-register. Um, you want the, the slide can go back to pre-registration slides. So pre-register, um, as we mentioned before, pre-registering costs only 50 hong kong dollars which is like seven us dollars or something um it's just a little way for you to make i mean it's a way for us to make sure that people are quite excited about gay games and we can actually make sure the event um you know once we open the actual registration we should be at the end of the year and people are actually already there um and you know you'll save money because there's a 200 200 hong kong dollar discount once you register um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Judy. Judy has a work call. She just I told do. me um, she has work. You know, we we volunteers and we're all working. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your amazing stories. Um, you have heard some pretty uh, enthusiastic people about gay games. And I just want to say that, I mean, Alice, you made me cry a little bit because this is this is why we. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I, you know, I give my time to gay games is for the young people and the young people in the community, um, who, you know, life has been a little bit difficult, COVID and so forth. You know, the bars have been shot, and so I think by the time gay games is on, um, things will be coming on, and I think it'll be a fantastic way for us to be part of our community a vibrant 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 global community so thank you very, very much everybody um yeah so how to get involved with gay games so these are like a few okay, points i always mention <laughs> sorry i'm, I'm gonna bye pop up bye, first baby. i'll be in chat okay soon. Bye. bye so this is how to get involved with gay games so i mentioned pre-register um another thing we talked about quite a lot is the fact that if a lot of people that are actually either in a, a, a team or form a, a, a sports team to participate in. I heard that Isaac was talking about this. This actually helps people to want to participate. Um, um, Buddy, you mentioned about volunteering. Yes, you can volunteer. You can volunteer about gay games um, as a volunteer you can become a champion you can you don't have to be in hong kong for that um and you know there's lots of things about this on our website um you can also um, be a um 
explore corporate partnership. If you think the, the workplace you work for um, has a, a, a DNI department or something, and we, you want people for, uh, from gay games to give talk or to talk about what is what is what does it mean to be involved with gay games, we can do that. Um, we, you can also just do as simple as um, share our social media posts um, and of course attend our, um, our monthly English webinars and also we have uh, Chinese webinars. Our next webinar will be uh, so the la last Thursday of September, uh, September 30th. And of course, donate. Um, Gay Games is, you know, we all is a charity. We all volunteers, and it takes quite a bit of fun to um, to put on such an event. You can donate or fundraise. So just go into our website www.ggh2022.com. Lots of information. And again, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for my guests, and um, see you next month. Bye.